If you need to rebuild the hydraulic pump on your Ford 8N, 9N, or 2N tractor, then this is the video for you. I will show you how to completely tear down the hydraulic pump, put all new parts in, and repair the pump so that it's working on your tractor again. Now, if the hydraulics on your tractor don't work, don't automatically think that the pump is the issue. The hydraulic system is a little complex on a Ford tractor. There's lots of moving parts, so the problem could lie elsewhere. I have a separate video that discusses all of the troubleshooting and will help you pinpoint exactly where the problem is. If you've watched that video and you know the problems you're pump then follow along and at the end you'll have the confidence to make this repair on your own tractor. So you'll see that there are two uh, bolts here at the top that hold these the valves into the chamber. You can see that they're kind of spring loaded so I'm going to take that off. Let me get the other one off of this side. Oops, I lost my socket somewhere along the line. There we go. Okay, get it off both sides here. Then these valves will come out. Here's the springs. Let me get those out this side too. And that one, the spring didn't come out. There's more in here. Let me try some needle nose pliers first. There we go. It's gonna come out piece by piece, it looks. Oops. There we go. And there should be one more piece in there, I think. Let me see if the magnet will get it out. Nope, it must've came out here. Oh, it did. It's right there. Okay, so you want to take out all of those pieces. You can use needle nose pliers or a magnet to get them all out. I have a little bit more left in here. There we go. You'll do that on both sides, and then you can take these chambers off the sides. I'll go ahead and do that. I lost my socket again. It's having trouble staying on. There we go. Okay. Zip these off. There we go. We got the chamber off this side. You can see the gasket material there. This pin at the bottom or that dowel kind of holds it up a little bit, but get those chambers off of the side. And next we will get the chamber off the other side here. Take those four bolts off again. Oops. Okay. Let's see if this side comes off a little bit easier than the last side. Here we go. It's loose. Let's pound on this side. That'll come. Yeah, I'm stuck on one of the pistons there. Okay, so we got the chambers off both sides there. Next, these pistons will pull out together with the cam blocks inside of them, like so. And then this bushing in the center. I'm going to take this relief valve out of the bottom of the pump here. This is an 11 16 inch wrench. It kind of screws in like a spark plug and it's got that spring on the back. Now we determined in the troubleshooting video that this relief valve was not uh, damaged or broken. Remember it would shoot out and look like a whirlpool if the relief valve is bad, but we're still going to replace it since we've made it this far. It's a good idea just to put a brand new one in since it comes in the kit. We're going to inspect the outside of this case. Remember it's aluminum so they do crack, especially in the colder climates where it could freeze. If you look at your aluminum case and it is indeed cracked, then you need to purchase a brand new casing or hydraulic pump, which we sell as a complete assembly. Or if you watch this video and determine that this is too complex of a repair for you to manage on your own, then you could just buy a brand new pump. Um, but if you wanna make the repair like we are, we're going to clean this up and then we'll be ready to reassemble it. When you're ready to rebuild your hydraulic pump, these are the parts that we can offer to you. These parts make up a hydraulic kit and it's a really affordable way to rebuild your hydraulic pump. It includes both your right and left hand chambers, your new pistons, cam blocks back here, a bushing relief valve, as well as the gaskets. Now, if you don't want to use all of these parts, we do offer most of these parts individually so you could make just a purchase of one piston and cam block, for example. Also, we do offer this smaller kit, which is the valves for the chamber. So if you want to use your existing chambers, you could purchase just this valve kit and place those in. If you do both your right and your left hand chamber, then you'll need to purchase two kits since this kit will only do one side. Now, if you do purchase new chambers, either individually or in the kit, it comes with the valves already installed. You can see that they're just a bolt-on ready to go. So if you want to purchase those parts, you can do so at farmtractorrepair.com.
At the bottom of your hydraulic pump, you do have this intake and exhaust valve that oftentimes will be stuck. Mine is stuck here. You can see that it's in a parallel position. It should be like this all the time. You could look in your tractor and determine that it's seized, or you might only be able to make that determination once your pump is out of the tractor, but it's definitely something that you should check. And if your valves here at the bottom are seized, then you can go ahead and clean them. I'll show you how. First, you need to take out this cotter pin like so, and then this will lift up careful because this one is spring loaded. So first I'm going to take this pin out here with a pair of needle nose pliers like so and see how that was spring loaded there. I caught it. Then it will lift up and it's a finger pincher here to get beyond all of that. There we go. Okay. So I got my, um, hold, my, holder there taken off and then this valve will come out. Look how long that spring is. This should just be cleaned up. I would not recommend using sandpaper. Instead, you could use some scotch bright like this to really clean it up. These get stuck because of all of the crud that's at the bottom of this hydraulic pump. There's no filtration system in the uh, tractor or in the bottom of the belly here. It's the transmission oil, the hydraulic oil, everything. And if it doesn't get changed often enough, then it will just really get gummed up. This valve can come out. You can see on the other side of the pump that there are two access holes here. That's so that you can take your valve out. I'm going to use a punch through the back of here and pound it out like so. And let me pick that up. Okay. So here is the valve there at the bottom. You can see that it's really dirty. I'm going to clean that up well and then reinsert it. I'm also going to look inside the hole here and clean there as well because clean is our secret to success here otherwise it's not entirely serviceable so I'm going to clean that up and then we'll come back and reinsert it. My exhaust valve is all cleaned up and I'm ready to put it back into the pump here. I did spray penetrating oils down both ends. You want to make sure that this plunges freely goes back and forth and then you're ready to put it back into the bottom of the pump here. I'm going to slide that in there just like so and then I have my other valve ready as well with the spring behind it that should go back and forth freely like mine does when you have both of your valves ready you can reinsert this again both of these are spring loaded so it's a little difficult here then you got to get this bottom pin lined up and drop that pin through there like so then you need two cotter keys one beneath this pin and one right up here at the top as well once you have your cotter keys in, you can see that now my valves work as they should. It's no longer parallel like it was when we started. Instead, it's uh, plunging back and forth just like it should. Your valve should do the same, so make sure you check this and you can rebuild all the rest of the pump. And if your valves at the bottom aren't working, then your pump's not going to work. So this is very essential. Make sure that's clean and that your plungers are working properly before you reassemble. I use an abrasive like this one to clean up the remains of the old gasket. I put this in a parts washer and really got it clean. It was so uh, sludged up here in the bottom that no oil could have flown through the bottom where the oil intake is for the pump. So make sure that you do the same. Really get it thoroughly clean before you start the reassembly. With the reassembly, we have a brand new bushing to go down in here like so. Your cam block bushings slide right into the pistons. I did put a little bit of lube on them so that they slide in easily, but you can see I have both of my bushings inside there. Now when I assemble this together with the cam, it's got to slide in and when the, um, you end up at the end with both pistons having these oil delivery tangs down towards the bottom. So with that all slid together and your two flanges here facing each other, then you're ready to drop it down into the pump. So this is a brand new chamber that comes ready to go and I have a new gasket. When you purchase the kit, brand new chambers come with it. So, and the valves are already in the chamber so it's ready to just bolt on. I have my gasket on which is directional. Notice that that dowel is towards the bottom. I'm going to slide that into there and then these pistons will slide into the holes of the chambers like so. And my dowel lined up. We'll reuse those four bolts around the outside to drop this chamber in there. My dowel's not quite lined up. 
might have to gently tap that dowel in. Let me get one lined up up here. And then of course my pistons fell out of my chamber too. Snap those back in place. Here we go. And then we're ready to tighten this up. I am going to show you how to put new valves in your existing chambers if that's a route that you want to go to keep your chambers and just put new valves in. So this is the pin and then the smallest of the valves goes on the bottom. It's going to drop down like this. Then we have the smaller of the springs and the medium sized valve goes on an assembly like that, drops down into the hole and you have kind of have to push it down in there because the um, rod drops in. Once that's in, you can put your finger in there and feel that it goes in. You have your bigger spring which rests on top of there, and then your cap, like that, okay? Let me do that one more time here. We've got the small valve, the spring, and the big one. Uh, I've seen people put the rod in first and then drop down all of the parts. You can you know, do that in whatever order you need, but every time you drop a part down, make sure that you get it all the way down into that assembly, and then this just tightens down like so. I have my brand new relief valve ready to go in. This does have the little valve on the end and you need to make sure that you get the valve on and that it goes in there straight. It goes right through the hole and then it tightens down in there. This is 11 16 so you can just use a wrench to tighten that up all the way. Before you put your pump in your tractor, it's a good idea to do a little air test. You can put some air through the high pressure port right here. And when you do, you're looking to make sure that there's no air leaks through the chambers, through either of the valves here, and especially not the relief valve. So let me show you how you do that. I'm just using the blow off nozzle on the end of my air hose here. I'm gonna squirt the air through here. There's no air coming out. Let me open that valve up and test it again. Still no air. This is successful. I think that this pump is gonna work well. My hydraulic pump is ready to go back into the tractor. I have my new gasket here. I'm just gonna put a little bit of gasket sealer right around um, the bottom here, just an even smooth layer, just in this corner. This is where uh, it's most prone to blow out. So I'm gonna set that gasket sealer on there, put the gasket on top, put a little bit more on the other side. The bottom of my tractor is clean. It's you know got all the remains of the old gasket out so my pump is ready to drop into the tractor and we'll put the PTO through the top lid back on and I'll show you how the hydraulics work so much better now that the pump has been rebuilt. I added oil to my tractor. When you're ready to add oil, you can use a 90 weight all mineral oil like this one. This is specific for Ford tractors made in 39 to 52. So the 9N, 2N and 8N tractors. If you can find this oil, use it. If you can't, then you could use a Hydrotrans oil and that would be sufficient for your tractor as well. You can normally find that 90 weight mineral oil at a tractor supply store or your tractor dealership would be able to get that for you as well. So with that, I'm going to start the tractor up. I've got my tractor at an idle here and I'm going to lift the three-point arms up for you. You can see how fast they lift. Very nice. Also you can see that my arms are holding, they're not drifting down at all. This is a very good repair. It looks like everything has been successful. I hope that this tutorial is helpful to you when you need to repair the hydraulics on your tractor. Remember that this video is about the pump. If you need to repair your top lid or you need help with troubleshooting, go ahead and look for our other videos and then you'll have the confidence to make this repair on your own tractor.